What's good, everybody? This is Preston, lifelong adventurer and travel YouTuber. And I'm Ryan, the travel photographer, here to capture moments worth saving. And this is Adventures with Pictures podcast, bringing all those travel tips, horror stories, and just all around travel experiences. This is your podcast to soften those travel blues every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now let's get started and hear from my guest today. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your man, Mr. Travels. And I got my best friend Ryan in the building, and this is Adventure with Pictures, another episode. And we have a returning guest, my man Marcus. Man, what's going on with you out there? Man, not much, man. Just out here chilling. I got the kids locked up, you know, <laughs> they, so hopefully they don't interrupt. I, I promised them some like ice cream or something. And so, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah that's, that's what you got to do. You got to bribe them. Yeah. You got to bribe them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's just the kids don't understand anything else outside of bribery. <laughs> They'd be like, what you going to give me? You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> so we had the conversation. I mm -hmm. put on the TV in a room. So we should be good. You know? Okay. Yeah, that's that's what's up. Um, And like I said, I know, I know we was talking a little bit before <laughs> we started recording. But um, but yeah, like just um, just kind of bring everybody back in. It's sort of like how you said you don't see a lot. I, I guess we don't see a lot of black men talk about the old travel space. The whole travel movement, and and that's kind of funny that you brought that up because um, my wife and I we went to this event called Urban Flight Collective this past Saturday in uh, in the DMV area, and so it was like pretty much like an in, I didn't say invite only, but they put out whatever. And then if you wanted to go, you had to buy a ticket and things of that nature, so you couldn't just show up. But we went. And it was for people of color to come into one space and talk about traveling and like, like our passions and networking, right? So with that being said, it was um, literally, I want to say, I mean, I think like maybe 80 tickets were sold. So like, you know, about 80, roughly 80 some people was there. And out of the 80 some people, I promise you like 70 were like women. Wow. So it just, just goes to your point to say, you know, we don't see a lot of men that talk about traveling. Right. And, and I feel like it's a good segue into this conversation about what you do, like your niche in the yeah. RV life. Right. Because one, well, I just say, I don't see a lot of black people <laughs> RVing it up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like, and I also want to apologize for missing the um the other show that you was on, you know that old Z monster. You know he's undefeated. You know what I'm saying he. It's okay, man. He out here <laughs> knocking people out. I mean he's undefeated. I mean that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um so yeah like so I guess my first question is about how did you get into the R uh, RV life? Yeah, so it's kind of it was kind of strange at first because I, I I'm right with you. I didn't I didn't see a lot of black folks doing it. But um, we had, uh, like I said in the last episode, we had planned on doing this whole world school movement. Like we were gonna just like do like you guys do, like go, I know you specifically, Preston, you mm -hmm. like to travel to different countries and stuff, yeah. but we were just gonna bring the whole family and just stay, do it for like a year or so and um, do some homeschooling along with it and just kind of travel the world. And there's different like uh, world school communities and everything. Right. But then we, we had kind of like this, gap before we were going to because we were originally was going to go to mexico and they right. had this world school community like on the yucatan peninsula mm -hmm. and that didn't start to september so i was like okay the summer's still available let's do like this rv thing and so we were just going to rent an rv and kind of like travel the country and then head over to mexico okay. but then covid hit mm -hmm. we're like man like this just kills any plans or whatever yeah. we don't know what's what's going to happen Right. So then I went, I was like, okay, how much would it be a month to rent an RV? And it was just ridiculous. It was, I think it was like two, $3,000 or something like that. Ooh. And yeah, it, it's, it's nuts. And so I was like, man, we might as well try to see if we can like, you know, finance something or, you know, just buy one. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually what we did was uh, we just hit up this camping world. Okay. And like we got the idea from RVing, first of all, from we saw a bunch of vloggers, like family vloggers that would do it. We were watching all the family vloggers, like from RVing to world schooling to um, just 
them taking trips because it was something we can watch with the kids. You yeah. Know, you know, it wasn't, you know, some of these other vlogs where, you know, right. you know what the hell is that? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, this was something like, hey, it's better. I'd rather watch this than watch, you know, all that other stuff. Yeah. Cartoons and stuff like with the kids. So, and that's where we got the idea. And one thing I did was I searched, I said, hey, are there black RVers? And there was a couple different podcasts and we followed them. And then I went on Facebook and just found some like RV communities. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this is something we, we can do, you know, and it looks it looks cool. Now, black folks RV a little bit different. I want to say this, like um, most of the black folks are in the South and mm-hmm. they go for weekends and, you know, it's like a party, you know, it's, you know, and that, that's what it is. <laughs> Two three days, you know, and you know, other folks, you know, they they go weeks, two weeks, you know, they go full time is what they call it. And so um, we're like, man, let's just let's go for it. And so we put everything in storage and just you know went out there. Now at the time we were we were leasing, so we were renting, so it was no big deal. Like we weren't trying to sell a house or. Right. You know, do all that, but we we did get rid of a lot of stuff too because we we needed to downsize. We just had a we were sitting on a lot of stuff, so we gave it away or sold it or threw it away, and then we we put our uh, we had a car, we put that into storage. Okay. So from there, um, so let me let me backtrack. I'm, I'm skipping all over the place, but when we went to Camping World, it was in February of 2020. So I mean, this uh-huh. dead winter, nobody's buying RV. The season hasn't stopped like started. Right. So we went out like an hour because I'm I'm out of Chicago. So we went an hour outside of Chicago to this place, Camping World, and it was like one salesman in there. He was happy to see us. He's like, "Man, ain't nothing going though." And so you know, it's just like a car. It's like the best time to buy or whatever. Very nice guy, but he was just. It seemed like he was trying to put us in a box. Like he was like, "Oh, you can only afford this and that." Like he didn't know nothing about us. You know, he just looked at us, and I was like, "Man." I, I literally yeah, had to tell him. Like, y'all can only avoid this. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was he like, even, you know. He didn't credit check no nothing. He was just like, this y'all right here. Well, he, he asked us all that. He's like, you know, what's your credit like? What's this and that? Okay. And, you know, um, and so he just kind of put us in the box. He didn't know we would pay cash or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I literally had to tell dude, I was like, hey, uh, man, we got, don't worry about the money. We've never been in an RV. We want to see this. Mm-hmm. And so he showed us a few. And then he, He's like, look, I have this RV show com- coming up. Camping World does. Um, check it out because we have a lot more you can see. There's other um, like uh, companies there and stuff. You can check out this. Yep. Got a little technical difficulty here. Let's see what's going on. Hit the pause button. The five different types oh, of. Right, but... Can you hear I think me? It froze for a second, but don't worry about okay. it. Yeah. So, um, it's a family of four. It's mm-hmm. me, my wife, and my two kids. So we needed something um, that you know we can all kind of fit in because we want, yeah. we we plan on doing maybe four to five months. You know, see how mm-hmm. it goes. Okay. And you know, we found one with like a bunkhouse, and so basically what it is is like it's a room that has bunk beds and you know the kids can hang out there and then we found one that had um a a slide out for the master bedroom so it makes it a little bit larger and and it had had two slide outs it had a slide out for the living space too Mm -hmm. so i mean that that bad boy can go from you know 100 square foot close to three four hundred which is still you know a small space but, uh, yeah, but that's still dope, though. Right, right. And yeah. so um, we decided to go with a travel trailer, and that's an RV that you can, like, pull with a truck. So we ended up buying a truck. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the travel trailers, you know, those are good for a lot, a lot. They're really good for, like, weekends and stuff. You're just pulling it, and you're pulling it out, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you can h- hitch it to your truck. Then they also have what is called a fifth wheel, which hooks to the bed of the truck. These are a little yeah, bit bigger. Yeah, but yeah my uncle you know, has that. Yeah, they're a little bit more pricier. Um, you can get it, you know, you can buy them used, you can get a good deal and everything. But I wasn't trying to like go all in with a truck, you know. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to, be, I just needed something to a truck that, like, if I if this was like a no go, hey, at least I got a truck out of it, you know. I didn't want to spend, <laughs> you know, for a dually or anything like that. And so, I, you know, we, we just got us a Dodge Ram 1500 
And we're okay. pulling like a, a 30, it's a 32 foot trailer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we pulled it with that. And then, you know, they have the class A's and then the class C's, which are the ones that you can drive. Those are pricey. Again, I'm not trying to spend goo gobs and money, mm-hmm. you know, because we didn't know how long this was going to be. So, <laughs> yeah. so we, we bought one from um, a used one. Mm-hmm. And you got to keep this in mind, too. If you buy an RV, try to get it used. Because what happens is RV is literally a moving box that's shaking. You want the shakes out. So you want you want to buy something that already has the shakes out. If you buy it off the lot, then you're going to run into problems that first year because it hasn't been shaken and things ain't been tightened. And so you want to try to buy something used. Oh, um, so hypothetically how, 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 how speaking, right? I know you, you just, I know you just explained the whole shaky thing. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, someone buys a, a brand new RV instead, you know, they, they got the shakes and all that stuff. Like what's the, what's the worst that can happen? Is, is, it, is it just the fact that it shakes the, the, the worst that can happen or can it like do damage or come off? Or, you know, like, like what's the worst it could do other than the shakes? Okay. So if you ever get a chance, Google like how RVs are made, you will see it's literally a factory and they just, zoop, zoop, you know, like it's not like cars where you got, you know, this nice material and all that mm-hmm. stuff. They literally, it's literally a box with wheels. They just throwing it together. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times what happens is maybe um, some screws loosens on doors or, you know, just, Minor things. Okay. Um, the underbelly, sometimes there might be some things that go on down there that, you know. Um, it was overlooked. Know. Well, right. so sound like, so for me, it sounds just like when you buy a new house. Like right. your house has to settle. Right. So that's one of those things where if you buy a new house, you need to understand you will be seeing cracks in your house and what you will need to get fixed. Right. So it's the same, you know, concept where you buy a brand new RV that, yeah, you got to get them kinks out as far as, Okay, you need to know what down the line is going to be, you know, rattling, shaking, getting loose, whatever that needs to be retightened. And then right. once you fix those issues, I mean, obviously you got to keep doing it every year, other year, whatever. But eventually, things will just pan out, and you know, it'll be smooth for you. Right. And you also have to go into, especially when it comes to RVing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be stuff that happens every other day. Like you got to, you got to be in a different mindset. You know, like. <laughs> The hardest thing was for us to be like, damn, man, like, why is, why is, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, not getting too emotional and it just, just fix it or figure out what you can go, you know, a couple of days or weeks without right away. Because okay. here's the thing with the RV um, world is there's not enough mechanics and not en- enough shops. So, you know, you can be in the middle of Utah or Wyoming or something like that. The nearest mechanic shop can be, four or five hours away. So that thing got to get towed. Um, it's just, Damn. it's a problem with yeah. the RV world. Now they do have like mobile mechanics and stuff. That yeah. you can call or whatever, and they can fix stuff right there on the rig. But mm-hmm. if, you, if you run into something where, you know, you got to like, especially when it comes to like some of those like class A's and class C's where they're driving and the engine, you know, goes, you know, you, <laughs> it's what it is, man. Yeah, you know? Yeah, right. And you might have to get that thing towed four or five miles away. And Jeez. so one of the things that we did to, you know, we, before we left, we said, what's the worst thing that can happen to us? And from there, you know, like, okay, what if we break down here and there, you know, what, what would we do? How would that look? And so we decided, you know, Hey, let's go ahead and get a warranty on this. Let's get some roadside assistance. Right. Anything that we felt like, what's the worst that can happen, you know, other than, you know, getting in a bad accident or something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, we looked at all of that and, you know, if, if you find yourself like something's blocking you from getting out there, you know, you just gotta, you gotta like say, okay, what can I, what, what can we do? You know, if this happens, so. All right, well, I have a question, like, like I said, you know, I'm impressing it myself. I know we're both new to this whole RV thing going on. So like for, okay, so for example, like where, did, like, well, but this is a two part question. My first part is what's the longest that you and your family have traveled in an RV, you know, like longest distance. But and and my, my follow up question is, you know, like since you are, you know, like you said, you already got beds and stuff on the RV. When you know, if you if you're too tired and stuff like that, wh- where do you go? Do you just go to like like the, the the closest like rest stop with the RV, or do you go to like parks? Like where do you like 
Yeah. So call it a night at. So just those yeah. part two questions. Yeah. Yeah. So what we did was, like I said, we planned four months out from the get go. So we started in late July and we're like, okay, let's get this fall covered. Let's get this. The goal was like, okay, if we needed to come home by Christmas, then, you know, we good or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we decided to go west from Chicago. So we, we want to go to the, like, we've always wanted to go to like the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California, and just kind of work our way back, you know, home. Mm -hmm. And we moved slow. So we would, we would stay at a place for like two weeks or whatever, and then drive another two hours. And we would just go to the next place, stay there for a week or two weeks and do it like that. Now, okay. what was cool was we, so to make it affordable, because I know a lot of people be like, man, like, you know, that's a lot of money. We had a membership to this uh, program, this company called Thousand Trails. And what they do is they have 100 plus campsites throughout the country. And you can stay up to two, three weeks at each one of those campsites. And I, we paid as low as like 150 a month. Just okay. to you park our RV, you know, on their campsites. And what they provide is, so every RV has, you know, you need water, you need sewer, and you need electricity. And so at those campsites, they will have all that so you can connect and everything and just stay there. And so that's the way we, we did it. So um, we would use that program if they were, they're real big on the West Coast. So like, like I said, those states like uh, Washington, Oregon, and California, man, we, we didn't pay for nothing, really. Um, <laughs> that 150 a month. There's oh, also, good. there's also another membership called Harvest Host that I, that we use mm -hmm. and it was like $65 a year, but there's, there's farms and breweries and wineries and museums where they let you stay on a property. And, you know, you just, you, you call them up the day before or a week before and say, Hey, y'all got any room or whatever. And they, most of the time they had acres of stuff. So they'd be like, yeah, you can just stay over there. And the whole key is to try to patronize the business. You know, that, mm -hmm. you know, you want to go there. Like my wife would buy a whole case of wine, man. We, you know, like, I'm like, we only need a couple of bottles, but she, you know, she'd buy a whole case and, you know, we'll end up talking with the owners and kind of um, yeah. doing it that way. We stayed at a farm, like an alpaca farm, which is like mm -hmm. llamas type, you know. Well, you know, I know yeah. Cool. yeah, we stayed there and they, you know, you get to feed them and, you know, it's good for the kids. They, I think that's where they got the most, like enjoyment was just being on those farms because farms has animals and kids like animals farms have lots of cats and dogs and all that stuff and so they they i mean i'm like damn are y'all gonna be some farm kids or what? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um that was only 65 dollars a month and like so in between each major destination we'll stay a couple nights at each like a different farm museum and stuff like that now okay. the thing with harvest host is cool but, you know, sometimes these places might be really in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes, you know, they, they, uh, the people might not be as friendly. You know, um, some of the places they'd be like, hey, just go over there. And I get it. We're in a pandemic. Everybody's like, hey, here, you know, but yeah. um, that was another way. Also, the government, man. So this is what's cool. The government has what is called um, BLM land, which is the Bureau. No, it's not Black Lives Matter. It's Bureau of <laughs> Land Management. Um, these are just basic areas throughout the country where you can camp up to 14 days without paying nothing, you know, like, like they're in the middle of nowhere too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see a lot of people just, you know, do that route. They, you know, they don't have to pay any rent or mortgage and they just travel. But do you still get the electricity, sewage and all that? No. So there's two ways of getting electricity. So you can either run a generator or if you want to put the money in, you can get the solar panels. And that's what a lot of people do. So we, we, we carried a generator in our truck all the time. So if we ever did that, we did it a couple of times where we stayed in the Badlands, mm -hmm. which is in uh, South Dakota. We used our generator. We ran that. And where else did we go? Yeah, some of, uh, some of the harvest hole spots. Yeah, we, we use the generator. But we don't, you know, we try to be mindful, you know, people sleeping and stuff. Because there might be some other campers there, too. So we're mm -hmm. running during the day or whatever. But, um, yeah. And then wow. water... Water has a run that thing. <laughs> you run it all night. <laughs> water you can get at any you know uh, pilot or um, any gas station. You can get water to fill up. Mm -hmm. uh, your you got a tank. You just fill up like your tanks, and then right. like you just kind of. So right. Is it like is it easy to monitor your 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 water levels, or do you have to go like, go outside and be like, oh shit, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> slow down on that water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every every pretty much every RV has a reader that tells you, you know, when you're running low on water. 
Um, here's the thing. So we made it simple as possible. Because the thing about it is you don't want to travel a lot with water sitting in there that adds more weight. Yeah. Um, so we would buy a bottle of water to drink. Um, if we needed to wash dishes and stuff like that, we'd use the same kind of dish water for the 24 hours or whatever. So we were just we just got used to kind of like using less water. Now you need water to, you know, to flush the toilet and stuff like that. So every, um, you know, that takes a lot of water. <laughs> but yeah, you just you just be careful, you know. So, you got to yeah. like, hey, you got to piss, no flush. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. And like water. my kids, man, they ain't be, you know our kids, they just run the water. And I'm, I'm like, yo, yo, come on, y'all. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. Hey, man, yeah. I see. I mean, like I said, that sounds so cool because um, for me, a person that is trying to explore America, yeah, I think that would be something that I could possibly be interested in. Um, you know, I don't know about the whole being in the middle of nowhere thing, yeah. but I guess if you like, like I said, if you plan your routes accordingly, you know, you can hit your little spots, whatever. But I think it's dope to be like, oh, well, it's, you know, I could just, you know, hit here for two days. Okay, this ought to suck. Let's move up the road for another five days and mm -hmm. just keep making your way through each state or just through the country. So that's um that's that's pretty dope. Yeah, and like me and my wife talked about it too. We were like, man, if shit ever got rough, I'm talking about rough, you know, like hey, we got this thing, and you know, <laughs> we could go 14, 20 days, whatever. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, man. Like, hey, hey, I mean, Apo yeah. apocalypse, whatever, man. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I think you're here, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so yeah, like you said, I think that's interesting. Like, I know for me, I don't know if I could do the RV thing. Like, you know, of course, like you said, if you got an RV, you can stop whenever you want, and stuff like that. It's just, I'd have to, I'd have, I'd have to be really inspired to hit just, just be doing like road trip like, like like that so like i know you say you went from chicago to california correct like right like what, what's the you know like i said i know we're in the middle of a pandemic and stuff but what's like the next are you already working on the next big trip for you and your family yeah so we're gonna still do a couple more like weekend trips now mm -hmm. we're here now that we're back in chicago uh mm -hmm. we're gonna go up to wisconsin like we realized that the midwest got a lot of stuff that we just just went over our head, you know. We we used it's to skyscrapers. Yeah, we used to skyscrapers, Lake Michigan. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, that's about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we um, next summer we're gonna plan something. We probably get a different. We might we might get something drivable too, so we can okay. just move. So we just like trade your um your current vehicle in and okay. Yeah, and here's here's the thing with RVs, man. Like they hot now. Like when we when we bought it. It was a depreciating asset, a asset, and I, it still kind of is. But right now, if I sold it, I would get double the amount what I bought it for, which I'd is like sell. Yeah. Right, and so that's I'll that's that's because that that I mean, when we bought it, we like, man, you know, that was one of the things weighing weighing us down too. It was like, man, like, what if we don't use this thing or whatever? But we, I mean, we can get half the money, double double the amount of money. Than what we bought it for now, which is crazy. So they have a for sale sound right now. That yeah. should be on Facebook market or so. Hey, who want this shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so we hope they get it. Yeah. So we hoping to get like a something drivable because um, yeah, the next the next big trip will definitely be next summer. We want to head back out west, but then also kind of go more um southwest and through the south. Because there's actually a couple black RV um uh campsites now oh. like that's yeah we, we got we got people folks buying up land and they put in rv sites and so you know and like based on what i see man they they definitely you know make it a, a fun experience for the family and everybody and you know it ain't you no know, bs you know rvs don't play man they 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 they, they pack it man like <laughs> hey my man sound like mad max hey, yeah I'm, they, highway. I'm running you over <laughs> right they don't play man and so they keep they want to keep that it's like bikers. It's like all these different subgroups that we're part of. You know, it's a community. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, don't know, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. Because I'm a biker myself, and uh, right. I mean, like I'll say, 95 percent of everybody that's on that bike got something on them. Right. And um, yeah, it, it it goes down. But right. You got um, that thing on. You said what? Got that thing on them. 
Yeah, you might got two things on you. It, 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 it goes straight war out there, Dre. Um, but like I said, um, I do like now. See, if I was to get into it, like later in life, or just when I'm at the end of my career, or you know, whatever, something like that, I would definitely want the driver one. Um, just based off the fact that it does look bigger, look larger, so you have more room. I'm assuming. Well, not even assuming. I, I mean, yeah, just if it's larger, obviously you have more room. Um, but I'm like, man, you know, seeing movies and things of that nature, I'm greedy. So yeah. I want one of those John Madden buses or <laughs> I want a goddamn, uh, you know, like meet the fuckers. <laughs> my man was in that damn stairwell right. driving like that's what I need. Yeah. Um, Cause you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, like, okay. So one of the things I've like been discovering as I do all this travel, I'm, and laser right now, cause I have a, a full-time job. So I haven't made the whole, switch to just full-time traveler and uh, obviously things will change at that level but i sleep in a king-size bed yeah i can't just be like give me this cot you know what i'm saying it's just not gonna work for me the downgrade you know yeah like so that's like you know when i go visit family they'd be like hey cuz you can get you can get the couch why the hell would i hit your couch <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna go get this hotel room where i can be comfortable, you know, in this 9,000 thread sheets. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, so I, I would think I would probably be one of those, I guess, bougie RVers or whatever like that. Cause, you know, cause if, to my mind, it's like, if we ain't gonna go all out, right, you going? going like, yeah, well, I, I say this like, our, our bed was legit, man. We had a, it was a queen. Um, and me and my wife were comfortable. Now we couldn't oh, have I could a do kid. a queen. I could do a yeah. queen. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. We couldn't. We couldn't do the kids in there with us. Mm -hmm. Like when they, you know, so you got like kids. separate rooms. Is it like? Yeah. So the kids are in a bunkhouse. The kids are in their own. They, our bunkhouse happened to be in the front, and so they had, like, they had their own beds. They were comfortable. Then you know, every once in a while, like my, she was at four at the time. She would wake up, and then you know how kids. Bed, you know, oh yeah, I get that. They yeah. jump. They want to jump in the bed or whatever, um, but. Then I had, um, we had put a futon in the main living space that, you know, folds out into a bed. So if they came in and I wasn't getting no sleep, I just go out in the futon and, and just sleep. Or whatever. Right. You know, we, we made it work. And, and the thing with them was it took them about five to six months to get comfortable sleeping in that bunkhouse. You okay. know, they would try to come into the room all the time. And I find I just like, all right, y'all can have it. Y'all still, <laughs> you know, I need my sleep. And then they just all of a sudden one day they was like, all right, we're sleeping in our bunkhouse, you know, and that's how that's how it works, you know. Yeah, so, that's pretty dope. Yeah. So, so like what well, um I know you already talked about once again, like the shaking and stuff like that. Um, and I do I do think it's very useful information about the stuff about the thousand trails and like the harvest, you know, spots. Harvest host, yeah. Yeah, you know, harvest host BLMs and stuff like that. But like, so is there any other like you know, advice you would give like a, a brand new RVer who, or, or someone who is strongly interested in RVing. Like, what is what's some other like advice that they probably just can't Google or something like that? Yeah. So first, everybody got to be on board. You know, with the like before you got to have a conversation because mm -hmm. you got one spouse that's just you know they, nah, I ain't doing that. You don't want them to ruin the whole experience for you because you know. There's some things my wife do I don't want to be at, but I'll be there and, you know, whoever, yeah. you know, oh, we, we you know and vice versa. But this is a long term commitment. So mm -hmm. you got to make sure that you're like when you're going to you're going to you with your family 24 seven. So um, it's just what it is. But you got to make sure everybody's on board, sell it to the like we sold it to the kids. They were down. The kids were sold right there when they realized they in this RV and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they can travel around and go to different spots. But just make sure everybody's on board. And also, too, you don't have to get everything right now. I, I know before the show, we were talking about how, you know, like when it comes to business, just start it and mm -hmm. work out the kink. Well, that you can't. That, right. that, that is a financial obligation. Right. <laughs> You'd be like, but, damn, I know I parked the RV here. Yeah, yeah. We got that, sir. We didn't. <laughs> right. Just, just start with where you at. You know, um, you don't have to get all the fancy stuff, you know, um, like my wife was built real big into like, oh, I want the outside to look nice. And, you know, I want a nice outdoor rug. And, you know, and I'm like, man, I want a nice uh, Blackstone grill and all, you know, hey, we eventually got the stuff and we yeah. build from there. 
Because a lot of times you end up spending a couple thousand dollars just trying to get that thing all nice looking. <laughs> but you know what, though? Yeah. The whole point of what you just said. Yeah. You, you still started it. Right. And just start. That's, and you, so that's that goes back to what we just said before the, uh, off camera. Right. You just got to start it. You can't yeah. just, you can't worry about being perfect. Right. You just right. start it. So, right. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go. Let me let me say this. So. If you and your wife are bumping heads before you go out, don't get an RV and try to think that's going to solve. Oh, we're going to be out of nature. We're going <laughs> it, to. It's times 10. You know, like it's it's a mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those things where because you you don't have nobody then. It's just you and her, you know, mm -hmm. and the kids. Um, <laughs> I mean, so, if you, you know, don't think about it, that's how COVID is right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel yeah. like I mean I don't know if the divorce rate went up during COVID or whatever, but I heard it did. I heard it went up now. It went up well, yet, it, so. it's going up now, but when first COVID first hit, everybody was they yeah, was like, yeah, they like shoo shit. We don't know how long this going right. Work. Right. The divorce rate actually was like stale, like it was flat. Okay. Because everybody was like, hey, we gotta figure this out together, you know, and <laughs> make this work. And so most of the people that got divorced during COVID. We're planning on getting divorced before COVID. Like there was, there was, there was no. Uh, it was a sinking ship already. So yeah, they're like, Yo, I'm gonna follow through. COVID and look. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'm follow through. I'm gonna get right. you with this Kobe. But right. <laughs> just make, But the real reality is just making sure that you're not going there for there's gonna be this problem solved, you know, mm -hmm. and making sure that you stay in community. So when I say stay in community, I mean like go to all the get all the, all the groups, Facebook groups, um, all the vlogs, you know, get, get pretty much, you know, get to know some of the people that run their own vlogs, ask them questions, because I think, you know, they'll tell you places not to go, places where to go, and okay. community, community is huge, and it's a little bit tougher with COVID, mm -hmm. um, everybody's, you know, just not, hey, stay away from me, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of people that are open and they, they, they share with you and, you know, what to do and where to go. And we actually hooked up with um, this community called Full-Time Families. I think their membership was like $50 a year or something like that. But mm -hmm. they would they would say, OK, who's in the southwest region right now? You know, where you at? And some people be at the same, especially with Thousand Trails. A lot of them took advantage of that. They'd be at the same park and you'll, you'll be able to connect with that family. Yeah. Like, I remember there was a family we met and that was near... We were in Coachella Valley, so that's like Palm Springs, California, that mm -hmm. area. And we went to Joshua Tree. Like, you know, we went, we did a, like a campfire there and everything. And so, you know, it's just stay in community because it can't get lonely. So, okay. You know, that, that, yeah, that's, that did bring me to like another question. And I, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm trying to be like cynical or anything like that or, yeah. or, or dark. But I know, like you said, you know, you got, you know, you stay in some of these places. Like, have you ever stayed somewhere and like, I know you say you stay, I know you say you stay like in the middle of nowhere sometimes. Have you ever like pulled up and be like two, three in the morning, like you know what? Now we gotta leave. This this just looks a little too Friday the thirteen ish. Let me let me pull up out of here. Something like yeah, that. but it was so. There was one spot we were we were in the middle of. I want to say we were in the middle of California somewhere on en route, and we were gonna stay there three weeks, and the internet was horrible. Okay, and we needed we needed to work. But it was just, it was something about the place where it was just, when you enter the park, it was still a mile drive into your spot. So like we was in the middle of nowhere at a park in the middle of no, like our spot in the middle of a park in nowhere. Damn. Man, we got out of there by Monday. Like we got there Friday and we were just like, my wife's like, nope, no internet. And this is just, this ain't working. And so yeah. we, we was up, we stayed at a, it was like a, um, you know how like fairgrounds, like mm -hmm. they have people, you know, like when the fair goes, people stay there. Like they have mm -hmm. their trailers, they pull it up. So a lot of fairgrounds yeah. in the in the wintertime, in the springtime, they'll just open it up to the public. And we were in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara was beautiful. Like it's the, that whole, it's right off the coast. Mm -hmm. But the park was just janky, man. Like it was, we just saw like a pimp. We saw, uh, you know, like a, something was going on that was like some, some, just like, all right, we, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we had, oh, you know, yeah. 
That pimp yeah. was like, Mark, Marcus, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? Right? Yeah, yeah. Young player. Yeah, it was. Like, it can was, I introduce like, you to another lifestyle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This dude was shady as I don't know what. But yeah, it was, it's was. it been a couple times. In a, in a whole year, you're going to get that experience. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's most of the time we just, we out, man. Like, we're not trying to be in that the RV. Uh, we trying to be out and exploring and whatever and, mm -hmm. you know, keep it at that. Right, right. I, I, and that's dope. And like you said, I, I'm sure, like you said, you know, that, that kind of comes with the territory, like you said, you know, because you, you're traveling so much in the RV. That's what you got it for in the first place. So it's, it's slightly off topic, but kind of not. I know one of the things that inspired you to, to get into this RV living was because, well, you know, maybe not inspired for the RV, but one of the things you want to do was like try to give your kids like a different type of educational experience. So like how... How has that been coming along on a, you know, overall during, you know, your whole RV experience? Yeah. So when we first started off, we were coming, they were coming out of Chicago public schools. And I mean, it's just what it is. You know, we, anything's better than that. <laughs> so, so, so here's the thing in, in March, when everything got shut down, of course they shut down the school. That kind of helped me with the homeschooling. Cause now I'm like, okay, I should be ready by the time we hit the road. And so I was able to, I was pretty much really focusing on my, my daughter who was in first grade at the time. Okay. And so, you know, we would do whatever the teacher told her to do. And just, I, it was, it was tough because she, she missed her classmates and everything. Um, and she really, I mean, when it comes to school, she was just like me when I was a kid, like, you know, I like the fun stuff of school, art, music, mm -hmm. gym, yeah. all that, everything else is, she did like science. So that was cool. But um, just getting used to just homeschooling her. And then when we hit the road, we decided not to enroll them in any type of public school. And so what we did, there's, there's a bunch of online programs that were like at self pace. And mm -hmm. one was like called time for learning. We started doing that. But the problem is, is these schools, especially like when it comes to math, they got this common core thing going yep. like, which is like, y'all, I mean, it ain't like the math we had growing up, you know, there's, there's five answers to one problem, you know, with the Common Core. <laughs> so, um, yeah, see, Ryan ain't really, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like me, I know exactly because I, I, I have a kindergartner right now. I have a second grader. Yeah. I, I got five kids. All five of my kids range from kindergarten to uh, 11th grade. And yeah. so we've been, I've been, I've been dealing with Common Core for a while. Yeah. Uh, that I actually got banned from my wife from helping. <laughs> Because I refuse to do Common Core. I'm like, no, nah, what, you, what you're going to do is two plus two. <laughs> right. <laughs> I ain't got time to be trying to figure out why it's four. Hey, God damn it. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? You Man. just have to know it. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I, it was one of those moments. Because when we, we put them back in public school this year, it was a moment about two, three weeks ago. I was just like, Lord, are you trying to tell me to go back to school? Because I don't know what, I don't know. I can't explain it to her, man. So, yeah. and I like I said, I know this is off topic, but I guess we can talk about it for a couple of seconds. Yeah. But I totally agree with you. I think so. The, the I think the disconnect is literally is the educational system. They wanted to implement something, and they just implemented it. Right. Right. Bam. We got. We. we this is the way we do things. Right. Damn the parents. How how we taught you. Right. And then what they and what they thought in their mind or they voted on, they thinking, oh, the child would just teach the parent. Right. How the hell is the child going to teach the parent when literally the child is learning? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, if, and then don't don't have a child that's not picking it up. Right. Now they're like, well, dad, mom, whoever, like, yo, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And you're like, well, shit. Uh, well, I'm not doing either. You know what I'm saying? And then, so like, even like, they don't, they don't even do like long division. They can like do boxes and yeah, all types. You'd be like, what the hell is this? So, right. um, yeah, like that, that was my frustration. I told a teacher at a parent teacher conference, what the hell y'all doing? Right. And then, so like, I'm for real, man, because um, it just got really frustrating. And luckily my wife is way more patient than I am. Um, you know, so she was really was able to help, but but yeah, yeah. I, I feel you with that with that common core stuff. And like I said, and I don't want to say it's, it's not it's, it's just not even really off topic because, like you said, if you was a full time traveler with a family, uh, you got school age kids. I mean, education right, is right. still 
you know, necessary. Um, so yeah, like you still got to teach them something. So yeah, so I, I can imagine you on that, you know, trying to travel, yeah. drive and teach a kid, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. Well, I ended up um, stopping that, but I think it was, yeah, earlier this year when we were out on the road, I just said, you know what, let's go, let's go straight to the books, man. And mm -hmm. there was a sister uh, who was doing homeschooling or whatever, and she was recommending some books on her um, website. And I just went with those and it was so much easier. You know, she, was, she can write, she can, because everything was, before was, um, you know, you're doing Comic Con on a computer. So, yeah. <laughs> so we were like, struggling. what is this Arabic, Greek, uh, <laughs> like that yeah. old numbers? Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> right, right. But, and then like the social studies, the science and all that stuff, man, that was, that was cool because we were just literally, you know, when you and you see rock formations, volcanoes, and all types of stuff, it's like you can build so much off of that. Just yeah. how they seeing it, they in it, you know, and right. especially at the national parks. So here's the thing, man. The national parks have like the junior ranger program, and you can talk with the ranger, and they got booklets they give you, and you can just oh, go okay. over that. Yeah. And so when we first went on the road, a lot of the national parks like cut the junior ranger program for um because of COVID, but, yeah. you know, this year, a lot of them were at the parks and, you know, they give you a lesson right there. Okay. So you plan on, as for the time being, you know, because you got younger kids, just doing it in the summer. Those are like going to be your... Right, uh, okay. right, yeah. We're back to, we're back, we're back to part-time, um, but long summer trips. We're still going to uh, go overseas too and just, you know, for like maybe a month somewhere and try to do that. Hopefully COVID's cool and everything and the travel. Um, okay. And so we we, we want to do that, show them some stuff, because my wife was in the Peace Corps and she was in uh, the Philippines. And okay. so she's been wanting to get back over there. Just, the, you know, she got people over there. And so we might do a similar thing where we're there, just Southeast Asia in general, hit up Vietnam and uh, Laos. And, yeah. And I've, I've, I've been looking at stuff lately the last couple of days, uh, a bunch of nonprofit uh, organizations to see you know, about traveling and things of that nature, just to see where I can help out and just to give back, you know, saying, right. stuff like that. So yeah. um, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be a great learning experience for the kids. Like you said, go to the Philippines or just somewhere overseas so they can actually have that overseas experience. That's yeah. Dope. Yeah, it's cool. And like, I, I would say this, man, it was cool being in the middle of nowhere, being in the cities, because we went to, I mean, we stayed in Seattle for like two months. Speaking of which, if you stay in Seattle, don't stay there in the fall and the spring because it, it when they talk about rain, that's <laughs> real. I mean, that's like I, I'm not gonna lie. There was a moment I got a little depressed, man. Like because they always they always talk about like people in Seattle depressed. That is real. Um, so we was like, man, we gotta start heading south. But uh we stayed there for a couple months, you know, just outside the city in um what was that place? Yeah, it was a place that was up by the cascades. They had a cool waterfalls, and I was able to connect with some uh, friends in high school that oh. they just so happened to live in the area because I had posted on Facebook like, yo, I'm here. And they like, yo, we like 15 minutes away, you know, so, hmm. yeah, we went to that. Then we stayed in San Francisco, too. Our goal was to get to San Francisco, like, by the beginning of the year and okay. was able to connect with another high school friend who lived up in, um, I think it's, it's like East... So Oakland's East Bay, but it's more south of Oakland, but it's up okay. in the hills. Fremont, that's the. Fremont. Okay. But it's up there, like in the in the the, the hills. Okay. And, they were, and like she actually was like a park ranger or something like that. No, her husband was a park ranger, and she had worked for the like the county parks or whatever. And so they let us stay on their property, and they call that that's a term in an RV world, mooch docking. So you just mooching off your friends or your family, whatever. With, yeah, mm -hmm. that was cool. We stayed there like two weeks. <laughs> so we was all over the place, you know, that's and it, that's what's career. cool. Yeah, and the kids got to Bro, see I don't know why cool. I just, for when you just said, I just felt like that Dave Chappelle skit, like Rick Jack, yeah, nice couch muff. <laughs> when I stretch out. <laughs> that's exactly what you just sound like to me right now. <laughs> no, we stayed in the RV, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, the yeah, same way come on, just like the old mooching thing. Yeah, sound yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's what's funny to me. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it's cool, man. We the kids just 
now I can stay anywhere. Like that's the beauty of it. Like I know you, Preston. You you know same thing with you. You can stay. Any- Man, it don't matter me. You know I can sense danger. I can sense all of that. You know where, you know some people might. Like, oh, I'm not staying. There. I'm not staying in cities. I'm not staying in the country. I'm not staying in stuff. You know it's all this. Now I'm at a point where wherever, man, you know, I, yeah. I'll make it work. Straight. Yeah, that's what's up. And and, and I, I want to say this too, like, you know, the whole black and RV in is is it's a lot of us out there. You know, it's just the problem is a lot of these companies, they don't put us in a lot of the marketing and stuff. So yeah, it looks like we don't do that, but we do, you know, we out there. And so some of these companies, like I know Camping World is starting to connect with a lot of black families and black RVers. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Winnebago. I know some people that got RVs through that and they part of their marketing. So you'll probably start seeing a lot more of it okay. you know, um, in the next you know, upcoming years and stuff. But, you know, we out here you know, like doing it. and, you know, you just got to. Yeah, you got to look real talk. The most racist shit I ever saw was here in Illinois. You know, uh-huh. we I mean, yeah, your state is kind of yeah. Like I mean, when it comes to just you know, uh, like I, I've seen places where there's Confederate flags in Illinois that didn't make any sense. You know, and I'm like, come on, man, we we all outside Chicago. You know, like well, take that shit down, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Like, you know, uh, and so like it did not bother me. Yes, I was aware where I was at. I knew I just can't do what I got, you know, like, I just can't be running up on people and stuff like that. Some places we did get stares. People like, man, you're like, <laughs> yeah, look at this. But once we hit the West Coast, though, once we hit the West Coast, especially down, like, Southern California, there's mm-hmm. a lot of us out there doing it. Um, it's just, it's cool. Yeah, that was my, that, you actually answered my question. I was like, yeah. you know, where do you think are the, are the most black RV of uh, you know, um, enthusiasts, and you said southeastern um, area. Like, I mean, southwest. Do you know, like, you know, actually, it's the not- southeast. So, so mm-hmm. like uh, Mississippi, Georgia, oh, south Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, they, they got a few RV parks too for that are black owned. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, what's, do, you, do you know, like, if there's any type of like online black RV groups or mm-hmm. Facebook? Like, yeah, what? there's a there's an association, the African American RV, blah blah blah. You know, one of those type groups, mm-hmm. and they have different chapters. All over the com- uh, all over the country, and they they have um, conferences and stuff too. So okay. where they a lot of them meet. And I think you mute Hey, I think you hit the mute button. Okay. Hello. Ah, uh, we can't hear you. Hello. There you yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know where you, the last thing you guys heard. Oh no, you, you were just saying. Um, you, you said you, you said there's like a black uh, African American RV group, and they yeah. have chapters. Is the last thing I remember. Right. Yeah. So, I do have a question, a couple of questions actually. But so the first one is because I didn't get um I didn't get a chance to go on your page really like like hardcore. Do you think you would get into the social media aspect of this? Oh, I, I definitely have. When we were out there on the road, I was posting every other day um, stuff, things we were doing. And I kind of got hooked on it. And I didn't, you know, I. It was now, were fun. you using like your personal page or were you, did you actually set up an actual business page? No, I was using my personal page. Okay. Yeah. And I actually ended up buying a, a website. It was um, Avengers on the Dash, but I just never got to put anything on there together yeah, okay yeah yeah because but i'm saying because like, you sound real knowledgeable like and you know like you said it's not a lot of black people that's doing it so the black people or white people or whoever uh, I mean, that want to get into the space right sound like you have a lot of knowledge i mean you're still learning obviously which we yeah. all are um yeah. sound like you know you'd be a good one-stop shop and hey i can get you going Right, I might not be able to, you know, whatever. I can get you going, get you put you in the right direction. Uh, so that was one thing I wanted to ask. Like, did you ever think about the blogging, vlogging of it, and making it, you know, your business, like you do it all year long, even though, yeah. you, like I said, especially you do a weekend trips, 
that that'd be your content. And then when you do those long extended ones, you know, those will be good, you know, um, ways of, you know, to, to get your market up. And yeah. Maybe, so you know. I, I definitely took a lot of footage and stuff. Um, okay. The one thing I did not want to do was it's so learning the RV is just a whole new world of itself. That's a lot of stress. And then yeah. trying to create content all the time and try to do all that. So I'm definitely, you guys know. So I'm definitely, I got a lot of stuff that I haven't even put on, on um, like Instagram and Facebook. Okay. But I definitely want to, even if it's like a 10, 12 minute, six series uh, season or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll do something like that. Okay. So yeah. I just okay. have to um, really put the stuff together because I know how to edit. You know, it's that's I, I love editing. That's what I do. And so, okay. um, yeah, just having the time to do that and really focus it. And again, you know, we talked about uh, before this, just starting it and not trying to perfect it because you know, there's there's this side of me that overthinks and you know, mm -hmm. wear that. So, hey, and my kids keep asking me. They're like, Daddy, when you gonna put us on TV and all this? <laughs> <laughs> so. Right, right. I, I saw them on your uh, on your page. You had you had that good old common plan over the other. Uh, oh yeah, that's my guy, man. Yeah, that's common. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought yeah. the, in the in the rocks and the mountains and stuff. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the music I, I put on there is stuff I like and um, mm -hmm. just if it kind of makes sense to the theme or whatever. You gonna go with it. Yeah. the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Uh, other yeah. times I'd be like, man, I'm, I'm in a Nas mood. This <laughs> right. song ain't got nothing to do with the hell I'm talking about, but. Yeah, like I did a Nas one. I did Whose World Is This, man? And it was like, yeah, we, was, like we was on the man. Oregon coast, like at some <laughs> random pull off stop. And this this rock structure was like in the middle of the ocean. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> like my kid was just I had it was that shot. I had a I had a shot with a grip like my my oldest was looking at the sun. And I was just like, yeah. man, this is and that's what we're going is on. Yeah, <laughs> right. So um, so like my next question that I really wanted to know was or is um, you know people like be always converting school buses and things of that nature into like their mobile homes or like them old Scooby-Doo vans and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that would, would that be something that you might get into later on in life or you like nah but that, that ain't my style. I really it, re it really isn't my style. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the problems I ran into was while being on the road we started doing a rental like a, a renovation and man, it's so tough to do while you're on the road because you just, like I said, you are dealing with homeschooling and all this other stuff and it's a small space. Then I got to worry about my kids getting to paint and just making no, like, it's just Too it's much. tough. Right. right. So that's one thing that I'm doing right now in the off season is, is, uh, I, you know, I go out to the RV spot and I'm, first of all, I'm trying to still get stuff out of there because I didn't realize how much stuff we had. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, and just um, we got a good warranty too, so we're gonna go um, have them look at some stuff here at the um, spot where we have it um, parked at. Okay. Yeah, so we that's the cool thing is like I'm at a spot that's about 50 minutes outside Chicago where they um, they actually have storage and they they can also they have a mechanic shop in there and they got a lot of the uh, the the Parts and stuff that you need. Okay. So, All right. this so, um, I don't know if Ryan, I don't know if he had another question. Do you have another question, Ryan? Oh, no. Nah, uh -uh. I was just soaking all this information. I, I, nah, you have one question? Yeah, yeah. So, I have two questions. Uh, uh, I actually wrote them down. So, I went. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. So, that's why I was like, hey, Ryan, if you had something before I got into this, so this is more kind of a, more of a serious, like, questions or whatever. Yeah. Go for um, it. So, okay. So the first one is, how do you feel the RV slash van life community, um, you know, how they handle the death of Gabby uh, Pietro or Pito, whatever her name, I can't remember. Uh, excuse me if I don't pronounce her name right. Now that it's been, you know, ruled a homicide. Like, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, where she was found at, we was there literally a year ago, the Grand Tetons. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Like I'm seeing a lot of people on on social media. Like I didn't have, I didn't know anything about. Like I didn't know who was missing, and then I kept seeing all the stuff. And I was like, I started doing a little bit of research. I was like, wow, you know. And people 
some of the people I follow, they're like, yeah, we saw that thing and that was the dude that mm. killed her or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's tragic. And the thing is, is try not to travel alone. Always let people know where you at, you know, um, especially hiking or I don't, I don't know what 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 the exchange was or whatever, how he got it. I, yeah. But um, just definitely be with people because there's there's plenty of like even though these parks are crowded and stuff like a lot of these national parks there's still thousands and you know of acres of like where you can just do stuff like that and yeah you can yeah i mean uh, yeah, like you said just because yeah. there's you know like you've seen like uh, in a public place for example a kid can still get snatched up you know that's right. why you know, yeah you know like at a fair or something like that so just because of the public place don't mean it's always 100 percent safe is my point. Right. So like that, my that, like you go to these, you go to these RV parks and you'll see kids everywhere. You know, they run around, you don't know their parents or nothing, but you know, my, and my girls be like, hey, we want to go with them. I'm like, okay, hmm. I need to see you. Like, you know, yeah. there can't be no, you know, you just I'm doing your own thing. thing. You know, mm-hmm. you eight, you eight and four, or whatever. Uh, yeah. and so so um, yeah, we and the thing too is our kids. You know, with this COVID stuff, man, you know, they want to go on other people's RVs and vice versa. They, they you know, I'll be mm-hmm. somebody knocking at the door. It's a little kid, you know, and I'm just like, what are your, what are your parents? You know? Said, right? you know, I could do anything. You know, it's just sad, you know, like, yeah. and so it's just like, yeah. Man, it's, it's, you know, it, you know, it reminds me when I was, um, you know, when my daughter was um, younger, like you said, you know, eight, nine years old and stuff like that. You know, she's a college freshman now, but I would, we would go to like David Buster's, her and her friends, and I would just follow them around like, like I'm like some small ass bodyguard. I remember one time, matter of fact, like true story, like I was following him around or something like that. And like, this guy didn't see me, but like he like approached uh, one of my daughter's friends was like, and I overheard him like, hey, can you help me find somebody? I was like, nah, you can talk to an employee about that. She, you know, yeah. she don't need to help you find nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, what you, right. So that's what I'm saying. But stuff like, you know, like it's, I can laugh about it now, but like my heart would jump out my chest. Like, like this dude would li- literally try to ask some like l- little girl, like, yo, can you help me find something? I'm like, right. oh, what you doing? You know, so right. yeah. something to play with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, it was tragic what happened to that girl. And um, you know, the, the van life, you know, they a lot of them are really in the deep woods where they, you know, a lot of them in um national forests and areas where there's no type of uh you know, cell phone signal, internet. And so they just trying to find a cool, cool camping spot where they can be really remote. Um, and yeah. just, it's just sad. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, uh, so it seems like some in the uh, RV lifestyle were, you know, very helpful with the tips and very um, observant. Would you say the community that you're a part of, that you guys are like one big social collective and, you know, you guys really communicate like uh you say like truckers and uh the CB like oh this is you no know, Ghost Rider six you know you know yeah. whatever whatever so you know yeah yeah definitely um, we have to I mean that's just what it is so, um, when you go into it you know there's a lot of misconceptions a lot of myths and like your brothers will tell you exactly oh they cool they cool like that area is cool you know or be careful of this and there's been times where somebody might have got like some discrimination or something at an RV park or somewhere mm-hmm. and they're like, all right, we're going to get on social media and call this park out and, uh, you know, rate them reviews and all that stuff. And that's just, it, I mean, that's what, that what, that's what works these days, you know, because yeah. one of the big issues. So like last year was crazy because you got to think about it. It was the pandemic. It was a political year. Then there was the riots. So when people found out we were from Chicago, they had all types of questions, man. They was, mm-hmm. you know, what is it? What is it? You know, like, what's your view? And I tried to stay away from that. Like, yo, I ain't look. Mm-hmm. I got to go in. I got cooked. The kids got to eat. <laughs> I, got, I got cooked. I got- <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, there's, you know, it was kind of my old man. He was like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, are you all right? You know, before we left, he's like, don't be talking to these people. Don't, you know, not everybody your friend. Like, he gave me that straight up, just like, like if I was a kid, like a little yeah, boy. Yeah, I was saying, like, what? <laughs> Don't talk to strange. <laughs> right. But he was he was worried, man, because it was the climate at the time. We left in July. So George Floyd was uh, you know, that was in June. Kids going crazy now. 
<laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, that was in June. So it was it was the height of that that craziness where it was yeah. like everybody, you know, it was at a point where like what side you own, you know, like this is the line yeah. draw. It was yeah. like some division, yeah. No, no, right. And speak out, you know, if you know this is wrong. So I remember being at a campsite and we this is one of the first campsites we went to. And the guy, we got real cool with the family. Like, you know, they 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 he gave me some tips about RVing because they were full time. And uh, you know, it was it was one of those things where like by day two or three, you know, he was started talking about like affirmative action and stuff, how it's messed up. And I was just like, he got who is this cat? Right, he got comfortable. And that's when I thought about my pops, like, hey, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, like, that's real shit. That's what you meet uh, uh, when, when you're traveling. Mm-hmm. Like, you meet all walks of life and, you know, it's still a racial climate out there. You know, it's still a, you know, very, this is America, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we know that's just, that's just part of our life now. Yeah, and we just that just that's everyday struggle of racism and profiling and prejudice and stuff like that. So um, you just gotta deal with it accordingly. Right. And just right. Uh, be mindful. Like I said, I try to keep stuff light when I meet people. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, act, you know, especially being American and being black, and they be like, "Oh, how you handle this? And how you handle that?" I be like, "Damn, bro, I'm out here traveling, baby. Like, what, what we talking about?" Yeah. Right. You talk about your damn mountains? I mean, let's not talk about, I didn't come over from like p- political science, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, you know, yeah. but, um, yeah. but yeah, like I said, like, you just got to be careful because, you know, religion and uh, right. government and things of that nature, hey, right. certain things you just can't talk to about with everybody. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, I'm glad, um, you know, you came back on, man, and, and gave us the scoop on his RV stuff because, it sounds dope. Like I said, my uncle has one. He doesn't use it to the effect how you are using it. Right. But, uh, he's using it more or less. Uh, my little cousin, um, he does uh, race car driving. Oh, so he right. uh, so he drives race cars, whatever. And so what they do is they load up the trailer. You know, they put everything. And that's my son. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's walking. I mean, I, um, but yeah, so he does all that. And he drives his RV. Mm-hmm. I know, man. I know. Like, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So that's that's what that's how he uses it. But yeah, yeah I, I just seen his for the first time like two weeks ago, and it's pretty dope. I was like, oh, that's what's up. He had it for a couple of years now, but that's what he used. So he doesn't really drive it no further from Virginia to like Tennessee or something. But right. he said, you know, when he gets into his you know sixties or something that um he'll probably get into that hardcore pick up and go and we, and we out yeah you know what I'm so, yeah yeah most of the time you'll see majority retired folks out there um but the the full-time family community is really growing mm-hmm. a lot more families are getting out there and, and doing it especially now a lot of them they're not even putting their kids in school because they you know they don't want them to get sick or whatever mm-hmm. uh, but and they just they just doing it that route you know going out like we did we kind of just yeah, yeah I mean that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, I mean, I, I like I said, I dig it, man. Like, I'm just into travel. So, like I said, everything that comes with it—the RV and the cross country motorcycle, whatever the case may be—I'm just into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I support it all. Uh, I may yeah. not do it all, but I definitely support it all. Um, mm-hmm. I want to make sure before we get out of here. I know you probably said on the last one, just give everybody your handle and. If you think you might be having some stuff coming out in the future, no, this year, even next year. Yeah. So uh, I'm at Marathon Marcus 79 on Instagram. And you can, that's where I post everything. Um, mm-hmm. I keep Facebook personal. I just, that's my thing. Um, but yeah, I post everything there. Definitely follow that. And uh, you can see if you go back, like you'll see a lot of stuff that I, how we traveled and, um, you know, I did a lot of reels, I did a lot of pictures and stuff. So, um, you can get a taste of it. And I also say too, like, just like go on YouTube and put black RV in and you'll get a list of like folks that are doing it. The same questions you guys ask them, the same concerns and, um, you know, it'll have you thinking, you know, and, and check out some of the other full-time families too. A lot of them, you know, there's some big ones like, uh, keep your daydreaming, let's okay. jump you up. 
wait, let's jump more journey. These people have been doing it for like five, six years. Like you see their kids grow up, you know. Oh man. Yeah. So, man, man, because there's money out there, baby. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, you know, the monetizing I get and all that, but man, that's a whole nother space in my head, you know, where I just, you know, I at the, at the time when I was doing it, I was like, I can't, you know, I just it's just too much. It is a lot of work. Yeah, it is a lot yeah, of work. Yeah. Uh my kids are not too heavily involved into my traveling. Um yeah. Cause you know, just because my kids are in school, the the uh, the expenses of things. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I try to do like little local trips. Uh, my kids haven't really caught the travel bug yet, so you know they're not really heavily into it. So I don't have a lot of pressure of doing a whole lot with them when it comes to recording them and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, they real camera shy a lot. They like they don't want to talk. They don't want to whatever. So I'm like, all right, whatever. But um, so I've been fortunate on that side of things, I guess, as far as the monetary part goes. But right. uh, I do like to introduce my kids and my wife and, you know, stuff like that to different um, just different things in the, in the world or this in America or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, just, just keep going with your stuff. And, you know, yeah. what I'm saying like you, you've been a real solid dude on our lives. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? You're the contributing and stuff like that. And it's your second time on the podcast. So. I just want to say thank you on that part. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, same here, man. It's uh, yeah, like I, I, I really feel like, you know, I feel like we need to stick together and support each other. I mean, like, it doesn't take much. You know what I'm saying? Even if yeah. I, like, when I mess with Thorough, like, I'm not a yeah. hiker at all. Yeah, uh, like, I'm not into hiking. Period. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I mean, Thoreau, I'm not. Like, yeah. just, just it was never. It was, it was never. Like now, you know, the more I'm see his uh material I'm like, oh that's kind of cool that's kind of dope what I'm, but before that i'm like why the hell i'm walking out these dangerous ass mountains with <laughs> bears lions you know everything oh, wow. so i'm like why the hell would i be doing that but the more you know i talk to him the more i see his pictures the more i see his youtube i've been like, okay I, I can see it you know it's, it's pretty dope and it looks very peaceful yeah you know so if you want a peace of mind that is kind of where you want to be at you know what i'm saying so um, and like I said, I just support it. You know, I said I support everybody and all the endeavors. Um, I don't, I don't definitely don't make it a black white thing, but right. you know, I do support my culture. Yeah, uh, to the fullest. Uh, as long as it's positive, like you said, like I don't all that ratchet stuff. Like I ain't into all that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely into positivity and uplifting. Like that's what I when I started my journey. I wanted something my aunt could look at or my kids can look at. Now, right. you know, I feel like they can get negativity anywhere they want. You know, right. it's, it's all, you know, posted somewhere. But when they see their dad or my legacy or my whatever, I mean, no, no matter how big I get, uh, whether I stay where I'm at or I become like, oh, okay, kind of recognizable in my perspective field, I still wanted to be like a legacy of something I can be proud of and be like, oh, you know, my dad was on YouTube, you know, he was on this, so he was that. This is what he represented. This is what he did. So right, right. Um, so that's right. kind of like you like where you like, you know, leading with your RV. Um, you know, you wanted a black, you know, few black, you know, RV guys out there, you know, family-wise too. So it's not just you out there, you know, you out there bringing your whole family. So now the more you do it and the more you show them, they're like, hey, well shit, I might give me an RV dad. I wasn't thinking about it, but now I might have to go yeah. in burn up this credit score and get some, get some RV love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I know for sure my kids are going to stick with it. They still ask it today when we going back out there. And um, and that's dope, man. Like, yeah. that's how I try to get my kids on a travel thing, man. I, I got something for y'all, though, man. Like, you could go... They got a thousand trails got a park right outside Disney World. Like, it's really? in Orlando. You stay up there to, I think it's two weeks, three weeks. And, you know... The way I look money. at it is like, yeah, you know, you know how a trip to Disney World can be five, seven. I've heard all types of crazy stories, you know, the amount of money people spend. Yeah, I did a week that. in Disney World. Yeah, it gets yeah you know, and a lot of them, they see the thing about Disney World, like Orlando is like, it's more than just Disney World. You know, we, we ended up getting like an Orlando pass or something like that. And you can do a swamp tour. You can do all this different. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. You got Lego yeah. Land, you got Universal right. Studio, Sea World. Right. Right. I went to, I went to uh, Gatorland. Right. Um, my wife and I went to Gatorland. That was pretty fun. I mean, it stank, but yeah, it was fun. That's <laughs> <laughs> <It> right, <drank> stank. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, that's what I said. It was dope, though, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ryan, I ain't, I'm a shit. Me, me and you been talking. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry. Go on, go. Go ahead, jump in there, sir. Oh, well, shoot. I mean, you can just uh, find me on Taylor underscore photos DMV. I'm always, um, you know, sometimes, even though we uh, host the show, sometimes I definitely fall back and I just like to to, to listen, especially if it went out after I ask my questions. Yeah, you know, sometimes I just like you just to soak it all up like a sponge and listen. Um, also, I, I did do my first experience at a, uh, a hip camp um, over, oh, this, okay. uh, over the past yeah. weekend. Um, I'm not, what is it called? Uh, hip camp. It's, it's pretty much like the camp version of Airbnb. Um, I actually went to like a, um, a camping property and I took some like promotional photos for that person hosting the campsite so they can try to further promote it and get more campers to their area. So that's cool. You know, the, yeah. So the deal is, you know, you have to, you know, go out there and, uh, you know, my wife and I, you know, we made a day of it. You know, we, we took the tents out, you know, set up tents, you know, highlighted all of the amenities, all of the activities you can do around that campsite. And um, so, yeah, so if, if anyone, I guess it kind of goes hand to hand with RV life. If anyone is interested in like just various campsites, whether it's, you know, you know, log cabins or cottages or hell, or, or just, the, the traditional campsite we need to bring a big ass tent right hip camp. yeah hip camp that they got it all so it was a fun experience so um i'll be posting some promotional photos of that soon oh yeah one okay. other thing too i wanted to promote mm -hmm. my other business and i did oh, yeah. it on a, no we yeah. ain't got time for that you already had your shit no but oh. <laughs> all right Preston. all right right it's uh it's my it's uh dash health so this is a platform for people seeking like community and feel like they're not being heard. They stuck somewhere in life. Um, we're going to actually this fall, we're kicking off some groups uh, for men like uh, and women and new parents. Uh, we'll have a group for them. And so it's just basically you'll dial in virtual. Hopefully we can do okay. some in-person stuff. But uh, it's just if you, you know, you kind of, you know, you're thinking about working on your mental health, but you don't know where to start. Or if you're thinking about like, or if you went through it, went to a therapist, but then you're in this phase where you just, they call it maintenance, where you just need yeah, to, yeah, okay. You don't fall off the edge again. You know, you just, you still in community and everything. And so that's, that's what it's for. And so it's, that's you can go to um, at my dash health on Instagram and you can join that way or you can go to my dash health.com. So, okay. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate that. Like I said, yeah. um, and like I said, that's exactly why Ryan and I started this. So, you know, promote whatever you have going on as right. long as it's positive. You know, as long as nobody said, go, go, King, like King of Diamonds, and uh, be like, bro, what you, what you doing? Don't want only fans be popping. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gets me at RV only fans. <laughs> be like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's tight. I do like that because. Mental health is a very, very important. And I think um, that's really have gotten me over a lot of things uh, mentally, just the, the travel part and, you know, and getting myself out of my shell and being uncomfortable, talking to people, meet, meet new people. Cause you know, as black people, you know, we talk, don't talk to strangers. Right. You know, don't talk to this person, don't talk oh, to yeah. like, in the social media world, you can't do that. Like you have to interact. Right. So, um, right. so yeah, that, that says it's very, very healthy to talk to somebody. So, you know, any listeners out there, please, you know, if you need it, um, or if you know somebody else that might need it, mm -hmm. go ahead and, you know, hit that line and, you know, and check it out, you know, don't cost you nothing. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's free, right? No, there's there's a, there's a price on this. Wait you know. a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually it's actually affordable. It's cheap, man. It's, okay, all right. It's startup. We're still in the startup phase, and you know we're just trying to you know we're trying to build a community. No, no, no. That's, that's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. We, we just yeah. joke. And it's dash. It's spelled out dash, right? My right, dash. right. Okay, spell it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so make sure you send us that uh send that because I want Ryan to make sure that he posts that. In the description, uh, man, I box. appreciate it. Man. So, like any any links that you know of that you kind of frequent, or like for the RV world, uh, you know, white, black, whatever, and also for your website as well for the for the business, make sure you send that to the Adventures with Pictures uh, message box um, okay. with DM. So yeah. that way we can put it in like when this episode drops, we can have that in the description. So that way 
you know, people ain't got to be like, what do you say? Rewind yeah. it, though. You can just click on it. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I, I'll put together some stuff, so. I yeah, and I, I got some uh, um, some affiliate type links that you can do. Like if you if you do decide to go um, buy an RV and you need uh, you know like you need thousand trails or the harvest host. Yeah, hey, we ain't throw them in there. Yeah, 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 I, you know, all that. yeah. yeah, yeah I, you know, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep plugging. That in. way, I get a little bit, you know, and uh, you know, <laughs> hey, hey my understand journey completely. I yeah. understand completely because I got me a couple. Affiliate links. I'd be like, yeah. God damn it, why nobody buys shit? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, hey, I want to say thanks for coming on the show. I know it's getting kind of late. Um, well, I know you're an hour behind us, so yeah, um, yeah I'm about to about to fry some chicken, man. Like, you know, I <laughs> look, I don't fry chicken for my kids, man. Like you do it for yourself. <laughs> no, like, it, it, so this this is what happened, man. We could probably Hey man, we, have, right? we, we, my kids, they get hot lunch, right? Okay. At their school. But somehow I missed the deadline or whatever to pay for it or whatever. Oh, so, okay. So the, my daughter's sitting in class eating her lunch, and yesterday they had Popeyes, man. Oh, damn. damn. And so I, I, I felt that. I was like, man, everybody else eat Popeyes. She said they eat. Yeah, that deadline. <laughs> so I told, it to, I told her today, I was like, I, I tell you what, I, you know, I'll fry you up some chicken on the way home and we, we'll eat that. And, okay, we that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what's up. All right, yeah. man. I appreciate it. That's funny. That is funny. That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, you gonna you know, I want some fried chicken. Man. You said what? You gonna play your stuff, man? Nah, they know me out there. No, I'm just saying. All right, um, Cameron. Yeah, so Travis of my lifetime, uh, Instagram. Um, also, I got Travels of Preston on my YouTube uh, channel, you know, just all around traveler of, you know, uh, solo, family, uh, couple. I do it all, all types of travel, all budget friendly. I don't do no luxury stuff. Um, so it's very affordable, as my man Marcus would say. Um, just support, man. All I need you to, and like I said, you know, when it comes to the YouTube thing, man, it's, it's very important to follow the algorithm, right? So everything, on Instagram, I mean, everything has an algorithm, all right? So when you click on it, just please watch it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I, we want you to enjoy it. We want you to love it. But at the end of the day, just click on it. Right. Subscribe, hit the like button. You know what I'm saying? It takes a second out your life, out your day. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, try to support, man. Like I said, this is all positive. Like, how can you not support this? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, you know, we got all these young brothers in here trying to do something positive with their lives. We could be out here knocking people's heads. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? This year, but like, yeah, I just, because I look at my Facebook page and I'll be like, man, why y'all not supporting? I got like a thousand friends and I'm not getting a thousand likes on my stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but if you post a, like a video of uh, King of Diamonds. Right. You know what I'm man, saying? If I post some, some juicy, like, man, me and my wife going to proms. A word, you you know, it's like, damn, all right, you know. But if I say, hey man, I got a video out, mm. <laughs> you're like, all right, well, yeah, scroll. Yeah. So, like I said, man, just, just, or, just or, or do you get people? Do you get people that be like, oh man, I've been following y'all the whole time. I'm like, bro, you know, all the time. Like, I, I, you never liked nothing. You never, bro. Copied. I'm telling, this happened last week. Yeah, I ain't gonna say nobody's name, but my man like hit me with the, I be seeing you out there. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> You ain't like subscribe. To, I, I I see you play, boy. I see. Don't hit me with the bird man hands, all right? You know what I'm saying? Like support me by physically supporting me. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I got I, I have an online t-shirt um um store. Buy a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, wow. take a picture, tag me in it. I don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just Hell like, yeah. dog, like support. Like, you know, I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And um. I mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot of jokes because it's just how I am. I just like to stay humorous and thought like that. But it is something serious, man, because we put time into this. Right. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no, like, right right now, I could be in the bed. I could be hanging my, this is, you know, it's family time. You know what I'm saying? I got to go to bed a couple hours. I'm, I'm, I'm old and tired. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's all I want to say. But, yeah, let's say we're going to keep moving the, um, the travel culture forward. My man, Ryan. Hopefully he becomes a better traveler. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> he's a work in progress. Great photographer, just a sucky traveler. 
Yeah, um, we definitely gonna get them out there in them streets, though. We gonna we gonna get them out there in an oh, RV, oh. airplane, boat, a oh. canoe, something. Hey, I, I'm know, being bad. I, you know, I can, I can I can see Ryan in the RV, though, man. You got you you got, got the person. He got the like. Don't mess with him. <laughs> you know, all all he need is like a little cigarette hanging out. Like nobody gonna <laughs> nobody. Gonna, <laughs> <He> like, <laughs> He cool, he man. That, he got that Cedric Entertainer like mechanic <laughs> look like yeah, but let me yeah. go, go ahead and that thing about hey, the Hey, I can I, I can totally see it because hey Ryan, you an introvert or you uh no, I'm an introvert and, and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm an introvert, but but if you yeah. you know it takes me it takes a lot, but if you get it out of me, I I, I could I could stand. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Ryan is you know real squared up dude, man. He's um you know what I'm saying we've been rocking for 20 years now. Yeah, uh, so I just seen the growth, like he's seen the growth in me. I think yeah. I kind of been the same, kind of retarded, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just, you know, that's just oh, me. Man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just nah, uh, I've no, always he, been like this. No, nah, P always been hilarious. So that's that's the thing. I think yeah. that's really sparked our friendship. P was like a walker comedian, bro. But that's the yeah. story another day. You yeah. had me rolling last week when you were talking about you sat on that that uh alligator or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I bro. was just like, this dude, because you had he he because you was talking about Ryan with his uh chicken and waffles. Yeah, and I was like, this dude don't like chicken and waffles, but he's sitting on an alligator, you know, face. Yeah, where's, where's the logic? Where's the logic, Marcus? You know what I'm saying? What the problem is? I sell that damn alligator. Hey, I paid my 20 bucks to get up in this thing. Yeah. I'm sitting on any, hey, bro, get an alligator. Hey, bring him out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He going to get this work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's, hey, I was good with it. My wife wouldn't do it, though. I was kind of upset, yeah. but yeah. But it's all good, like I said, man. Man. Um, man, thank Chris you guys. We'll see though. you next Wednesday. Oh. Yeah, thank um, you. And uh, thank you, you know thank you for joining, man. We appreciate man, it. If, appreciate if there's something you want to jump in there, jump in there next Wednesday, man. Go I'll, ahead. I will. I and will. Tell, tell your friends, man. Bring, bring bring some friends in that thing. Don't yeah. anybody that has anything to contribute definitely. to our type of conversations and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely, I will. All right, man. Uh, so yeah, so we gonna get up with you. Be easy. Be safe out there in Chicago. Yeah. Um, you know, because, you know, <laughs> y'all don't play. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Them, boy, them boys is out there. So now. Yeah. 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 That's All a whole, right. that's yeah, a whole yeah. nother podcast. Yeah. 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 That's the Bella <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so, what are the numbers looking like? No. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Like, okay. So, this is Mr. Travels Preston, my man Ryan. We got Marcus. We're going to sign out. Till next time. All right. All right. All right, peace. All right, fam.